This is quite a, quite a long story, so what we've decided to do is just sort of concentrate on some of the, the key aspects of what it took to actually undertake this, this um, adventure. That there is our cart um, with all of the stuff that we needed to live for 40 days. Um, we did it in an unsupported fashion, so everything that we needed, we started off with. In fact, our cart weighed 430 kilos when we started. It wasn't, it wasn't that. Um, it took us about four years to develop this thing. We started out in 2010, we went to um, Namibia, and we started out with a really horrible cart that didn't work. Kind of built it up in 2011, so it was starting to look more like what we were going to use. Um, and that was the final product. Um, it actually had mountain bike wheels, no mountain bike wheels on it that could go through the sand. Um, and that cart was actually lighter than the packet of bolts that our second version <laughs> was bolted together with. <laughs> Um, it was precision engineered here in Joburg in Kaya San by Snapper Displays. Um, and that was basically our life. Yeah, and, and the empty quarter itself sits geographically within four countries. You know, two of those countries we cut off the list. Yemen is just the Wild West. And the Saudi Arabians, I honestly think we freaked them out completely. I mean, when we told them we were crossing the empty quarter with a cart that weighed 456 kilos and that we were pulling it, instead of driving it, they were just like, whoa, you know, you guys, you don't know what you're doing. You're not coming into our country. So, Ultimately, we walked through Oman and into Dubai, and you know, that had its challenges too. We, my visa got declined in Oman. Um, in fact, not declined, they just didn't do it properly. So we had 30 days to basically complete 35 days, a 35-day journey. Needless to say, uh, 34 days into it, we were still wandering around the Omani wilderness, and uh, we spent most of that time panicking about seeing us in jail in Oman, thinking, what the hell is going to happen? We've walked for 34 days, and here we are going to sit it out in jail. Thank goodness that never happened. We paid a fine, and we got through into UAE, so the trip continued. <laughs> Over to you, Dave. <laughs> okay. So, basically, a lot of people want to know how, how we navigated. Um, I think that this trip would have been impossible 10 years ago. Uh, we relied very heavily on Google Earth, um, which seems to be a common theme. Um, a lot of the time during the day, just because obviously there was sunlight and that, a lot of people sort of said just, why didn't you travel at night when it was so hot and things like that? Um, we really needed to be able to navigate by sight. Um, that's a Google image, and those sort of wavy things are really these 300 meter high dunes, and we managed to sort of weave our way through most of them. And literally, we could kind of see the gaps in those, those things on our images that we, we had three kilograms of printed maps from Google Earth, and that's basically how we did it. Um, we had a tracking device called a Spot, and that sent off a signal every 20 minutes of where we were. We had it on a live tracking, and that was literally our journey every day that we, um, that we did. And it was 40 days exactly from the beginning to the end. Yeah, so I mean, we, we created this fictitious monster when we started this thing called the Wurgle, because we knew that at some point during this expedition, things were going to get so desperate and so ugly that we needed something to blame, blame instead of taking it out on each other. And on day 34, we actually, no, what am I talking about? Day 13, we crossed into what we called Wurglewood. This was the most inhospitable place you could find. The sand was soft, it was hot, it, the cart weighed it like f forever. I mean, it doesn't even make sense, but it was heavy. And uh, we were just pretty bleak. Um, we actually experienced 49 degree temperatures here. This was our first taste of heat, and from this point onwards, the heat was a constant companion. I mean, 49 degrees cooks your brain. You literally have no idea what's going on half the time, and you have to really manage. It's a fine line between heat exhaustion and utter desperation. And I mean, desperate times call for desperate measures. But the heat from this point on was something we had to really manage. We did come close to heat exhaustion on a couple of times. Um, but yeah, we had to just suck it up and just carry on going because there was nobody there. You know, like I said, it's empty for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Basically, we, we decided to do this thing without, without any support, which meant that we had to start with all of our nutrition, all of our spares. What we started, we weren't allowed to take anything on board. The only thing we did take on was water at three well-known bedded wells. Each of those was a pack per day, and that fed three of us, each one of those packs. Um, we were taking in about 3,000 calories a day, and we were burning in excess of 6,000 a day. So it was really just a controlled burn, and the idea was to try and get to the end before we died. <laughs> it's really as simple as that. Um, out there, that's pretty much what it looked like. Um, it, was, it was really just, we'd walk for eight hours a day, it would be, okay, guys, at five o'clock, it's time to stop, and that's what we'd do. Yeah, I think also, I mean, uh, just with the ethics side of it, I mean, because we were, we, were we were trying to create this world record that we'd be the first people to cross the empty quarter, on, empty quarter, empty quarter unsupported and on foot. And, you know, 
the ethics alone, I mean, unsupported fundamentally meant that we would carry everything, our mechanical supplies and our food for the entire journey. As Dave mentioned, we had three water wells that we could collect water from, but it wasn't that simple. Because along the way, we had these surprise challenges that would pop up, you know, and that would come in the form of strangers popping out of nowhere. I mean, it's not as empty as you think, because there are people, and they pop out with Pepsis and, and, and ice cold bottles of water and, 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 and literally picnic bags. I mean, pic and when you haven't seen food in, in 35 days, a picnic bag is pretty hard to turn away. But we had to turn it away because we had created these rules, and these rules said that we couldn't take any assistance from anyone. I mean, it sounds pretty stupid. But you must understand that, I mean, all we had was the self-imposed set of rules that would allow us to experience the empty quarter in a way that very few people, few people have ever experienced it. Um, we're also trying to, you know, honor what other explorers had done before us. I mean, this, was, uh, this picture relates to the tar dilemma. I mean, we would walk next to tar on the sand because we didn't want to walk on the tar because that was the problem. And I mean, it just was mindless, you know, but uh, we did it uh, for a long time and it, uh, yeah. So, <coughs> A lot of people always ask me, do you guys still speak to each other? Um, <laughs> Only yeah. after a thing like this. You didn't see there, spot the problem. That orange thing was our first aid kit. We lost it on day one. <laughs> um, by the end of the thing, the whole of Marco's feet were really just one big blister. Um, and we, we actually, we'd gone, we'd trained, we'd done a couple of trips there, and we had a really, really good system. Everybody knew what they had to do. But there were these small little things that happened. We lost, we lost a mattress. Um, so three of us had one of those little blue foam things that we kind of shared under our hips, and that was it. And then, really, the big, the big thing that changed stuff for us is the one day we lost our solar mat, and that was really our lifeline. It was what we got our power from to, to get, you know, call help if we needed it. We got to the end of the day, we'd done 33 Ks, and we found that the thing had, had gone missing. So I had to go back, and I found it 25 Ks back on our tracks. So I did it. 50k trip that night, and basically after that, we worked out a whole lot of systems, really, that stopped yeah. any kind of problems yes. after that. So sort of that was on about day 10, and the rest of the trip was, um, was pretty, pretty stress-free after that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much.